Alright, time for another draftphysics.com video presentation. Debatephysics.com also. But frankly, the debate again is in no um, reasonably fairly articulated uh, on the subject kind of form. You know, it's a debate about bullshit uh, rather than the actual physics, unfortunately. And this Ian Gosling uh, video is just another, he says, proposed experiment. This is really just four minutes and 30 seconds of ragging and then maybe 10 or 15 seconds on the actual subject. <laughs> okay, so we'll play it. What the hell? Hello, guys. No uh, demonstrations today, I'm afraid. Just a little bit of thought. So, no demonstrations. I'm sure he's been playing with the damn thing, but, you know, just pretend he hasn't done anything. Anyway, um, he has it all written down over here, and so that isn't any part of the video to the very end, where he actually gets to the points raised. But he just won't do that. First, he has to do this. Now, I'll try not to respond to it in kind. I'll just make my counter-arguments. Going on. Um, I've done so many of these experiments now, Gary. Yeah, I did a bunch, too. So, you know... You want to argue about how many I did and all that? I mean, I you know spent a lot of time working on the pendulum and playing around with it and blah, blah, blah. Um, let's just say, well, the setup was a little more difficult. And then I had the wind problem and the different, I tried different levers and all of that. So, um, you know, without, you know, then I did the catapult thing with the rubber bands, blah, blah, blah. So, been there. And all the evidence... Yeah, see, all my evidence wasn't quite like your evidence because I had a much lighter lever than you do compared to the weights. I had hunks of steel as the weights and a little hollow tube as the lever. So my results were much better than yours. just happens to turn out that way because the lever was so much lighter. So it was closer to the idealization. Now, I've said this in the previous video. The idealization is 2 to 1. That's if the lever is weightless and infinitely strong. That's the idealization. That theoretically, all right, if we could build such a lever, you could actually do the recoil of the gun with two joules and get the bullet to leave, okay, with its thousand times higher velocity because you put it a thousand times further away. And the fact is, if we could build that ideal lever, it would work and it would prove momentum is king. Okay, but we can't build the ideal lever. And so it's that's a, a variable. Now it's a problem because we don't have the idealization. So you have to understand how the magnitude of the problem and then try to figure out a way to make the system you've created show the truth. And that's all this is about. It can show the truth if you allow it to. And you're just resistant. Is contradicting your theory. So again, my theory was, okay, based on the mere logic of saying the lever's irrelevant, and that wasn't logical, okay? The lever isn't irrelevant, because the fact is the lever slows down the further away you put the weight. The lever uses less of the energy, and that's a huge realization, because for real-world levers, that's the mechanical advantage. The mechanical advantage is you're losing less to the lever the further out you can put a weight. Now, less of the energy is being used to move the lever. You only have to move a lever a tiny little bit if you have the thing way out here to get a very high velocity, just a tiny little bit of motion. But if you put it really close, you have to do a lot of quick, very, very quick motion to get any kind of velocity out of it. The lever has to do a lot of moving. I already pointed this out. I illustrated it in a video that you no doubt watched and couldn't understand, I guess. See, it'd be nice if you could, you know, make a little mark on it and say, okay, I didn't understand that part, but you didn't do that. Instead, you just do this. Your rhetoric just ignores everything I said. Your theory needs to be falsified, as you know. 
<clears throat> well, with this falsified word is absolutely useless. Whatever games you want to play, every piece of evidence has to be tested. Okay, you don't call. You don't need to call it falsified. You test it. You you rigorously put it through the run to see if it actually works. That's why you repeat experiments like the Eddington experiment. Is that adds rigorous, uh, um, um, it qualifies your evidence. It adds strength to it. Okay, by repeatability. For it to be taken seriously. And if you're not willing to do the experiments yourself, or you're on okay. So I've already stated that I am. You know, I will do them because you know. You can't. That's a simple argument, right? I mean, yes, if you could just do what I requested, okay, then, okay, I'd say fine. The experiment's been done. Why should I repeat it? But, of course, you won't do the simple things I suggest. I suggested putting the weight out further, and you didn't, as a fact. You didn't put far enough, okay? So, you know, and then you're pretending it, oh, it, worked. it didn't work. It obviously was demonstrating it was going further. The further out you put it, the further, the more energy it was getting. So clearly it was working, and you just didn't want to pay any attention to the fact that, oh yeah, there was a huge difference. I did move it an inch or two out, and it made a difference. It's got like 20% more velocity. That didn't cue you in to, well, maybe if I move it a little further, I'll get 40 or 50% more velocity. Hmm. Didn't occur to you even, right? <laughs> you couldn't see the trend? Able to. You really ought to. You say, I'm going to pay someone to do it. Well, I'm here. I've been doing... Yeah, okay. So you, you, yeah, I say I'm going to pay somebody who isn't going to do it this way. They'll do it in a professional manner. You pay to have it done correctly, meticulously, carefully, micrometers, straight angles, good camera angles, all that kind of crap. Okay? You don't pay somebody to do it like this. Them. I'm willing to do the experiments. That's really great. You're willing to do the experiments under your conditions. And that's always how it's been and it's always how it will be. You did the clay experiment, dropping the objects on the clay. You didn't get your results and you hid the experiment. Okay, you didn't show anybody the experiment. You never had to falsify it. You never had to come up with any kind of explanation. Your silly explanation was the clay crushes. Well, the clay crushing would mean there'd be erratic results. It wouldn't mean that every single time you did the experiment, you'd end up with the same result. If every single time you did the experiment, you get the same result, it means the clay crushing doesn't have a damn thing to do with it. That can be logically deduced. So you never had to survive the test. You never had to accomplish the task of explaining why your experiment failed. You never did. I've, I've mentioned it now at least 20 times, and you have zero response to the accusation that that experiment is still valid, and you've hidden it. Show us a bit of money, and then I can do... No, uh, fuck you. I'm not going to give you any money. I'm not going to show you any money. I'll do the experiment. I don't need you. You can go fuck yourself till dead. Um, again, it's. I don't think it's my responsibility to do these experiments. It wasn't my responsibility to deduce all of this crap about how these damn things work. All of this should have been done by yours physics. Your physics hasn't done the experiment. Your physics hasn't tested. It takes four times the energy to go twice as fast. It takes 25 times the energy to go five times as fast. Your physics hasn't tested any of this stuff, hasn't proven any of it, hasn't demonstrated any of it. You're just pathetic defenders of... In fact, it, there's, there's no other word for it but liar. To say you have evidence for your theory? No, you don't. The experiments to your requirements to help you falsify them. So, again, I'm not paying you for anything. You're an asshole. Why the fuck would I even think it would it'd be in the realm of possible that I wouldn't have to constantly think you're cheating, especially if money's involved? Fuck you. The point is that you've got to falsify him. So, again, he's playing this game. You didn't falsify your experiment. You hid it. That's what you did. Redo the crushing clay experiment and show us the results, okay, and then explain why they came out that way. What you're doing is the evidence of the experiments is coming out against you. The evidence of the experiment is not very good for either side, frankly, okay? You're not getting any kind of precise numbers um, or consistent ones. And that's what we found out. It found out that it really doesn't matter where you put that frickin' mass. Okay, because what really matters is the differential between the weight of the lever 
and the mass. That's what's going to decide how fast it goes. And I'll explain, I'll explain that again. Okay. And you'll ignore it again, probably. Trying to design experiments that will... You're trying to design a cheat. So, okay, so what's the point, right? We, there's no point in us having a conversation. There's no point in us interacting because you're a duplicitous hypocrite. That's my accusation. Your silly little speed tester, your little slider on your scale. I pointed out how that's bullshit because the faster it moves, the more likely it is to produce errors. Just a fact. The more momentum you give something, the more it can defeat little bits of friction. Uh, everybody knows that who's done any kind of engineering with stuff. The slower you move something, the more likely it is to get hung up on little tiny things, not as move as far. The faster you move it, the more it just plows through any of those little defects. Lots of flaws in the logic of that slider. And you didn't pay any attention. You're moving it with gravity, by the way. You're, it's sliding in the direction that gravity is pushing it, which is also just an asset to making it have error. So fuck you in this accusation. You're engineering things to make the results come out your way. Any equipment that will try and show you're correct. That's such. You're just explaining, okay? The fact is, is that we found out. I mean, to my surprise, frankly, okay, that if I move the two mass almost anywhere on the lever, I'm not getting. I'm getting a proportionally a different reading, okay, in terms of the further out I moved it, the more velocity I got. And that wasn't intuitive, and it wasn't what I th how I thought it would react. Just a fact. So we, you know, learned something, that the lever isn't very specific, and that what's really causing, again, the, the dissection is right on your piece of paper there. That shows you, those numbers show you exactly where the problem is. That's cheating. You've got to take the experiments for what they're showing. Bullshit you do. Nobody uh, in history should have done that. They did that with the photon experiments. They did a superficial examination. They never really specifically looked at the experiment and, and um, you know, matched it to their predictions to see if their predictions were actually correct. Uh, and the fact is, is that right in the nuance of that, that mechanical function, if they would have spent a little time looking at it, they would have figured out what I figured out. Okay, <laughs> that it's the distance between the surfaces that decides it all. It's not about how big the opening is. It's about how, what distance there is between the surfaces. One of the excuses was that the lever bends. This one doesn't bend. It's it will the further out you put the mass. That's the argument I made, you fuckhead. Okay. So again, play the game. Bridget. But the point is, even if it did, if this ruler was a flexi lever and it's pushing on the weight there. So he doesn't think that he doesn't understand that things flex at different speeds. And that, you know, I think we've all seen the circumstance where something bends and flexes, but the object is already left by the time the flex unflexes. So it pushes the whole time it stays bent. And as soon as contact ends, that's when it starts to do its wobbling. And so it ends up doing this after it's all done. That means all of that energy didn't go into the object. So the idea of it bending, helping, in my opinion, is ludicrous mush. See? It's storing elastic energy in the ruler, or the, which would be the lever. It's, it's consuming energy and releasing it at who knows what rate. And so it can't, you know, it's, it's just as a fact, it can't help in this experiment. Storing elastic energy. When it gets to the end of its travel, you'd get the whiplash effect. The whiplash effect isn't any more than the energy that should have gone into the object if it didn't bend. So all you did was not put the energy in and then tried to put it in again, maybe too late. And that's the whole point. We already have talked about how this has to be as instantaneous as possible. Getting the energy from one side to the other side as quickly as possible is exactly what you want to do. And anything that slows down that transmission of the energy is likely to affect the performance. All the 
Oh, I've forgotten the name of it again. When you a sling a slingshot effect. That stored elastic energy is given. Uh, and that stored energy came from what energy? It was consuming the spring's energy. The spring's energy bent the thing. It's energy that should have gone into the object and instead is in the bending. And you're just making some plain, you don't know the truth accusation that it's okay because you get it all back. My argument is, no, in some cases you're not going to get it back. Because that elasticity will not be as quick as it needs to be. Back to the weight. I was going to do a test and might even do it of a rigid lever compared to a flexible lever launching one weight. I predict you don't see any difference. Okay, go ahead and predict it. <laughs> you know, I, I, like I said, what's your logic? The bending had to be created by tension torque. Okay, the torque was torque you wanted to go into the object and it didn't because it's in the bending. And then the hope is you'll get it back. But that's all. You can't gain any benefit from it. In fact, the flexible lever might do slightly better for some reason. Uh, for some reason, you say. So that's great. Your theory is for some reason. I'm saying there's not much logic to that for some reason. If the idea is to get the energy into the object as quickly as possible, Bending is just going to slow down that process. But, that's an excuse. That the latest one is, oh yeah. So, it, it doesn't matter whether it's true or not. So, this is their argument. Now, see, I'm arguing you made an excuse about the clay. That the Play-Doh is too dry and it fractures. And that's why I got perfectly consistent results. No matter how many times I did the experiment, I got the same outcome. It's because the clay fractured. Now, I would argue that that excuse is just one of your excuses. It's crap as an excuse. All right? It's not an explanation. It's just a cheap effort to create a fake narrative to explain why the experiment didn't come out your way. And that's all it is. What I have pointed out about how the lever works, the catapult, it just happens to be an absolute truth that if your catapult weighs you know, one third as much as your the thing you're trying to throw, then it's going to really matter that you try to get as much of the energy in the catapult out as possible in the sense that you don't want the catapult to consume it. So the idea is you have to slow the catapult down which means you have to put the mass further out. Before I propose an experiment, I want to just get to see what you thought about it. What I've learned is... I've already proposed that first the experiment you do is just leave exactly what you got here. Put strings on this mass, do the two to one um, distance relationship, which frankly this doesn't even look like two to one, but I don't know, maybe this was set up for something else. I mean, this distance does look longer than this distance to the fulcrum, but whatever. Um, and uh, just do the experiment um, with both objects on the lever. Just to see, We'll both be able to see then what the two to one looks like. We'll see the object has to go twice the velocity. We'll see what twice the velocity looks like as a comparison. We'll see this. Obviously, the two mass will go a lot less high. And we'll definitely see the lighter mass go four times higher is the whole argument. And so we'll have a good image of that. And we'll be able to see if your camera can image that correctly. And we'll also see if your lever can produce that result correctly. So why not do that experiment first? That's what I've suggested. It's also a mathematical fact that that experiment with the same spring compression will produce the same total momentum. So if you add up the weight of the lever and the weights of the masses and the velocity of the average, where the average speed of the objects are on that lever, if you add all that up, that momentum is going to be exactly the same as the average momentum when you just have one weight. 
So it'll also give you a mathematical point where, of comparison, where regardless of what speed the object travels, you'll be able to calculate the average momentum because you know you have to include the speed of the lever. If the lever, if the spring energy launches the, the one mass, one distance, um, to a certain velocity, it has to launch the half mass to 1.4. So again, he keeps saying it. Um, that's your theory before we knew this isn't an idealization. So you said the idealization will behave that way. Well, we don't have the idealization. So the fact is that, yes, it will be, um, it's not going to achieve the two to one relationship because as pointed out, the lever is a significant portion of the mass. If the lever was one tenth the weight of the objects, the lever can't fuck it up much. So all you'll do is lose 10% to the lever. But you're losing a lot more than 10% to the lever in these cases. that velocity because that is squared and that would give you two times the height on the scale right and in the last experiment he did he got two times plus so he did actually create free momentum so that's just a fact the object did in fact travel if you said one and a half was how far the, the two mass went the uh, other mass went um, four. Well, three and a half at least. Maybe three and three quarters, but it doesn't matter. It went faster than it should have. It's just a fact. So the experiment was so perfect that he got extra kinetic energy out of it. <laughs> yeah, right. Sure he did. And the square root of two is 1.4. But what I'm saying is it doesn't matter what you're saying. You pay no attention to what I'm saying. So why should I pay any attention to what you're saying, right? How many times have I said what I'm saying is, and you're not paying any attention? For the kinetic energy or the conservation of energy to be fulfilled, fulfilled. I'm just saying, look, do whatever the fuck you want, okay? I Again, as stated, if I have to do the experiment, I'll have to do the experiment. But I'm just saying, it's not all that challenging. I pointed out the challenge to you. I said, look, you can keep moving the thing out on the lever and you'll see if there's a point where it's going to stop going faster and faster. There's a point where it just ain't going to work anymore. So you're going to get a peak. You'll get a peak velocity. And the peak velocity for the half mass is going to be four times the peak velocity, I mean, you know, twice the velocity of the uh, full mass. It'll just be much further out on the lever than that two to one relationship. It might even be a two-to-one relationship. It's just that the two-to-one relationship is going to have to be much further out on the lever, but you have to get the average of the mass of the lever. There's a point where the average mass is moving, and it's really about the distance from the average velocity of the mass of the lever. That's the distance that's more important than the distance from the fulcrum. The half mass always goes roughly 1.4 the velocity. So it doesn't. Okay, so you can keep saying it goes 1.2, it goes 1.5, it goes all kinds of different numbers. So that's just him making up a fable, okay, <laughs> that he's getting perfect results. He's not getting perfect results. So, yes, but it tends to be a lot closer to your prediction than my prediction. You can say those words. That's okay. And I've explained why, okay, it's because your lever is one-third of the mass, your lever's really heavy compared to the weight of the masses. So what the lever's doing is a huge part of what the experiment is doing. I don't know where I should explain that. I mean, wait till I'm done with this video, or maybe I should just now. Maybe I'll just do it now. So I already did this part, but I'll have to do it again because he really just doesn't pay any attention. <clears throat> All right, by his own numbers, the lever weighs three. Okay, now we know the light mass is six, so it's three plus six is going to be the total mass that has to be moved. 
the light mass, okay, is 12 ounces, all right, and the lever is 3. All right, so just plus these numbers, right, you get end up with 15 here, and you end up with 9 here, and now you put 3 into that number, okay, all right, and so what are you going to get? You're going to get, you're going to get 3 here, and you're going to get 5 here. So the lever is one-third of the weight being moved here. So the total energy, that's just, this is what you're moving. This is the object you're really moving, okay, is the, um, so one-fifth. Um, <clears throat> so the proportion of the mass that is the lever, okay, is gigantic difference between the two. With the heavy mass, the lever's only one-fifth of the total of the mass. In the case of the lighter object being pushed, the lever weighs one-third of the total weight. So when you're looking at the lever, you have to figure, okay, and as pointed out, look, you can cut this part of the lever off. So later on, he's going to say the magic words, I can't make the lever lighter. Yeah, you can. You can cut this shit off. You don't need it. All right. It doesn't matter. You don't need a counterweight. Okay, it's totally superfluous. So you can make the lever lever, lever lighter. Um, but the point is, is you're still going to have to account for the weight of the lever. And what you're really just saying is, is this when you put the two mass here, all the spring is seeing is the weight of the lever and the mass. It's like as if it's one continuous thing. All right. And in the case of the two mass. The lever is only one-fifth of the mass. And in the case of the one mass, okay, the lever is one-third of the mass being moved. So obviously the amount of energy going to pushing the object is much smaller in this case than in this case. And so to compensate for that, you have to make the lever consume less of the momentum to make the two equal. That means you have to move this further out, <laughs> okay? And that'll cut down on how much energy the lever's using, all right? And uh, until you get to this one-fifth number, where the amount of momentum in the lever is only one-fifth of the total energy. Then you're getting four-fifths into this object, where before you were only getting two-thirds. That's the difference. So you just have to keep going out. Now there could be a mathematical way to um, figure this because you just make the you know you make the lever a real thing and you say okay, I have to the lighter I make the lever, the further out I put something, the less the lever has to move. So the further out I put it, the less velocity the lever has to have, the total lever, because I'm increasing this angular velocity all right and so I'm getting a higher velocity and the lever moves less higher velocity lever moves less that's the fact of moving things out so all you had to do was in your last experiment you moved it an amount but it wasn't enough and what you really needed to do was move it further or you just need to move this in further and then you would have gotten the correct result but you weren't willing to do that experiment all right, but that's the real catch, is that the weight of the lever is the problem. And the only way to make the lever lighter, you know, without making it more bendable, um, to stay keep, to keep the lever you have, the only way you can keep the lever you have, the heavy one, and to do the experiment correctly, is to change how much energy the lever's consuming and make the amount of percentages okay one-fifth the energy moves the lever in this case you have to make this one-fifth and to make it one-fifth you have to go out here when you're moving it out here then you will use one-fifth of the momentum to move the lever and the other four-fifths will go into the object so I did explain this and he ignored it <coughs> plainly
He thinks that's a catch. He thinks that's a gimmick. All right, I'm going to prove that that's the real physics. And I could prove it by using a really heavy lever. Okay, and you will see that the results don't work at all because the re real heavy lever is going to totally dilute any difference between the distances of the two objects. So it's not going to, you know, it'll be even worse. The outcome will be even worse. So all I have to do is make the lever heavier and heavier, and I'll make the capacity to move these two objects at different speeds harder and harder. Now, the thing, I've done so many tests now, the interesting thing is wherever... Whatever. Do you, have you seen so many tests? I mean, how? what, what, the, what the hell did the test take? 43 seconds? I mean, fling, fling, fling. Now, look, it takes a little setup time. Not saying it doesn't. Uh, you know, restringing the pendulum, getting it the right height. That's a little bit of work. But once you've got the setup, it's not that much work, and you know it. Before I put these weights on the lever, we're always getting roughly twice the height. So it's not true. Okay, so we can say roughly, roughly. Yeah, well, it's really rough. And even in your own flinging experiments, you got rough results. So again, you know, you're... It's kind of pointless for you to argue how precise your experiments have been when, you know, that last run, you know, you got like a, at least a 30% difference, you know, in outcomes. 30% difference in velocities from one fling to the next fling. So obviously it's not very well engineered. On the scale, on the half mass, which equates to 1.4 the velocity. Interesting, isn't it? Even if I launch them both. I'll, I'll just argue to you there's no interesting, okay? We have the Brozo experiment we can fall back on. Same exact experiment, essentially. I mean, you put a stop in, but without the stop, and these weren't pendulums, so, but he was sliding things on glass. Okay, so, so and he got 19 to 11. Now, 19 and 11, and it's, isn't any, we're close to 1.4. So, again, we have plenty of conflicting evidence and good reason to doubt. And you're pretending you've proven. It's just unescapable, your conclusion. Well, do I actually physically have to play the Brozo in video in front of you? I mean, how do you account for the Brozo results? I mean, you can see the little yellow one move what looks like well, well, it's certainly well past one fourth the diff, you know, uh, uh, only going 0.4 faster. It's clearly going really fast, and the results are 19 and 11. 19 and 11 are not um, 19 and 16. They're clearly not. 16 and 11 are really far apart. From the same spot on the lever, one at a time. The half mass goes roughly twice. Okay, so just a lie, right? So where we put it on the lever, it went faster and faster the further you put it out. You found that out with the two mass. You moved it out further, it moved uh, uh, significantly faster, 30% maybe. So we already know that, oh yeah, you're not going as fast as that can go. <laughs> so, so play the game, go ahead, but that's all you're doing. You're playing a game. It's high indicated 1.4 the velocity so it makes no difference where we put them on the list so again he just said it makes no difference made a huge difference the the fact is the half mass moved significantly higher i mean it was more than a whole measuring line higher significant it was at least you could, you could say it's at least 30 percent more velocity because he moved it out farther and all he had to do was move it further and he would have gotten more but he didn't do bother. Like again, this isn't his priority. I'm seeing that all the time now, and it's in the videos. If you look carefully. No, oh, well, like I said, if I look at this carefully, I'm, jeez, I'm really not too sure these <laughs> these marks are in the right place. So again, I, but maybe, like I said, maybe he's got these marks for some other experiment. I know you don't want to look carefully because it's going. Okay, see, more bullshit. So I know you don't want to show the clay experiment that you hid, okay, that you covered up, frankly. I know you don't want to hear about it, but that's what you did. You didn't show an experiment that was decisive, complete confirmation of what I predicted. You didn't show that experiment. Just a fact. 
You didn't have to debunk it. You didn't have to falsify it. You didn't do a damn thing. You just said, let's pretend it didn't happen. Against what you're saying. But anyway, the latest excuse is, it's the way... To so, let's understand. It's, it's an explanation based on what was observed, which was, hey, how come it doesn't make very much difference where I put the object on the lever? How come it's... How come it doesn't catastrophically fail like in the, you know, the experiment where you're dropping another object in? It really does matter where you put the thing on the lever. You get a huge difference, a huge degrade in performance, being a little bit off. In this experiment, yeah, a little bit off doesn't make any difference. The lever. For instance, the one mass is 12 ounces. So he's actually doing this, you know, right in my face. <laughs> okay, so sorry. Yeah, you didn't you didn't miss anything. Uh, I need to put this back on and get rid of this. Okay. So he's got the numbers right here. Now we can't be sure. It could be 3.1 ounces. Who knows, right? He's, he's <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. Leave us three ounces. The mine weight is 15 ounces. What the spring is seeing is 15 ounces. Uh, right, but what's it doing with that 15 ounces? What percentage of that 15 ounces is the lever? And obviously it's a much smaller percentage of the mass is the lever. The half mass is 6 ounces, plus 3 is 9 ounces. What you're saying is it's not seeing half the weight. I'm, what, I, what I'm saying is that clearly a bigger percentage of the mass that it has to move is the lever. Just a fact, a bigger percentage of the energy has to go into the lever in one case. And because the lever is consuming that huge percentage, you have to make that percentage the same. The same percentage of the energy has to be lost or it's not a fair comparison. So you have to make the lighter object synthetically heavier, or you have to make the, li the lever synthetically lighter. And you make it synthetically lighter by making it move less. If it consumes less of the momentum, you have to make it consume the amount of momentum it would consume if it was only consuming one-fifth of the momentum. It should. Half the weight would be seven and a half ounces. So the spring is seeing a disadvantage with the half mass at two distances. It's it's showing it's feeling a heavier weight. So again, it's not feeling a heavier weight. That's just not the truth. It's just moving a, a six ounce mass. It's just a fact that the it's just moving a six ounce mass. It's not moving something that weighs twice as much. So it was. It's just wrong of me to even argue that that's. It's moving something that weighs twice as much. No, it's just about the velocity. You're demanding that it go twice as fast. It can't go twice as fast without the lever moving faster. So if I don't have it further out, the lever's not going to move fast enough because the lever consumes more energy the faster it has to move. I need the lever to move slower. So I have to put it further out so the lever moves slower. But the object moves faster. The total mass of the lever moves slower the further I put the object out. The further I put it out, the slower the total mass of the lever moves. The object moves faster. The lever moves slower. That's the, um, the catch. That's the part where, oh wait, that doesn't sound right. No, it's, but it is right. The lever, in fact, uses less energy the faster you move the object. You're saying, which is unfair, it can't launch it at the same speed because it's heavier. How, I can't reduce the weight. So this is not what I said, okay. Uh, I did make it, I made this argument. The lever's too heavy is the problem. Okay, so he says, I can't make the lever he lighter. Well, I already explained three times now that yeah, you can. You don't need the extra half of the lever. So get rid of the other half of the lever almost. You can get rid of, say, you can get rid of a full, um, you know, three-fifths of the lever. You can cut off three-fifths of the lever. 
So, you know, you won't get half the weight, but I mean, you can almost cut the weight of the lever in half, almost. So do that. I mean, you don't need to cut the lever. You just need to move the fulcrum to the <laughs> to near the end. All you need is enough room for the spring, okay, on the other side of the lever. That's all you need. The rest of that lever you don't need. It doesn't do anything in the experiment. It has no effect except to increase the amount of energy being wasted moving wood. You want to have a minimum amount of energy wasted moving wood. Can I put any clearer than that? That's a pretty clear statement, right? You want as little energy wasted moving wood as possible and as much energy as possible going into the metal objects. The lever that much you could do, but it's very difficult. Carbon fiber, blah, blah, blah. How about, Gary? Well, like I said, I, my experiment worked better than yours merely because I did have a much better ratio. I, you know, I'd say I, I maybe if maybe I was seven to one, you know, in terms of weights. I think it was better than that, frankly. I think those steel hunks, those solid steel bars, weighed significantly more than the lever. Instead of doing that, we reduce we reduce the half mass weight. Let's say we made that half mass weight four and a half. Then plus the three of the lever, we get seven and a half. Which uh, so if you make the so he wants to make the weight lighter, which will make this fraction even worse so so he, he wants to make the difference he wants the the weight now the lever at four and a half the lever will weigh more okay than half the weight of the so it won't be one third so what let's four and a half divided by three is you know it's almost as heavy you know it's one point Let's see, so it's going to be, the fraction would be, uh, let's see, seven-ninths or something. I mean, you're going to end up with a, a an amount of um, lever being much more part of the experiment. So more of the energy, a huge amount of the energy now, a full, well, not a half, but almost half the energy, we could argue, is going to be moving the lever. So half the energy will be wasted in moving the lever. It's not half, it's whatever that number is. <laughs> you know, it's three quarters. Well, three quarters bigger. I, I wanna be, I want something a little less than a half. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's see, so two fourths, so I could just make that two fifths. Hmm. Two fifths wouldn't be more than one third. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. You get the, the drift. He's making the lever, the object lighter, which makes the lever proportionately heavier. That means it's consuming a higher percentage of the momentum. With whatever momentum it gets, a higher percentage of the momentum will go into moving the lever instead of moving the object is half of the 15 so the spring would then see exactly half the weight if you make it lighter you have to put it much further out on the lever so if you want to make it lighter it'll work but you have to put it like a foot further down the lever just as to, to get to one fifth to get to the same amount of the, the same percentage of the energy going into the lever you have to move it all the way. You have to move it a long way to change the whatever, the three quarters <laughs> into a one fifth. What do you think about that, Gary? And what do you predict would happen? I predict if you put it a whole 10 inches, if you put it um, more than three times the distance, uh, more than three times, maybe four times the distance, it will move twice the velocity. So yeah, go with the lighter thing, just put it a lot further out on the lever. Giving you that advantage, do you then think you're going to see twice the velocity or four times the height on the scale? I predict you won't see much at all, a little bit of increase obviously. 
Uh, yeah, there'll be a, there'll certainly be an increase, but again, you're again the percentages are really against you. You're going to end up wasting a lot of energy moving the lever rather than moving the object because you reduce the weight. But nowhere near twice the velocity, four times the height. I'm willing to do it, Gary. Uh, I'm totally uninterested. Sorry. I'd like you to see first if your device actually does push things correctly. So just do it with both objects on and see if you get what you have to get, which is exactly the four times four to one height differential. So if you don't get that four to one height differential when you have both objects on the lever at the pro proper distances, um, the two to one distance, because now you have an ideal lever. The lever moves just one speed. Okay, both objects are guaranteed to be fairly treated because the lever moves at one speed. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, that would be the ideal is if we could actually move a lever at exactly the same speed, but then you'd know the answer too. You'd know that it would be the same momentum. So what's really happening is the lever is obviously moving at different speeds, and the more faster it moves, the less, the more energy it consumes, and the slower it moves, the less energy it consumes. And we're talking about the total movement of the lever, not how fast it moves at one end. We're just talking about how fast does the lever itself move. <sighs> Anything else? So, yeah, I, I'm not interested in this. So, I'm, I'm interested in you making your lever longer by changing where the fulcrum is. So, drill a new hole for the fulcrum. Okay, make a longer lever. And then you'll be able to move the objects um, with more liberty and uh, see that you're going to gain more and more velocity as you move the object further than the idealization distance of 2 to 1. The idealization is nonsense because your lever is not even anywhere close to it because your lever is almost one-third the weight okay of the object you're moving but I wanted to know what you thought first let me know boy so yeah as, as pointed out you're making the fraction worse okay so the one one third is already bad enough one half really bad so you don't want to head towards one half all right you're right you want to make the one third the same as the one fifth making it one half isn't going to help is then you have to go even further. But the fact is, if you go far enough, you will produce the outcome. The total momentum will turn out right. The fastest speed, just put the, put the object on the lever and find out where it goes the fastest. Because there'll be a point where it starts to get too heavy. You know what I mean? It's too much. The, the percentage of the mass will not be able to move the velocity required at the distance you have it. And it won't work. So there will be a point of diminishing return. And so just go with the fastest you can push the two mass, and then the fastest you can push the one mass. And in those two tests, by side by side, you're going to get the two to one outcome. Because the momentum is in fact conserved. So when you maximize, when you minimize the amount the lever steals from the experiment, by putting an object further out on the lever, the slower you can make the lever move, the more energy goes into the object. That's the principle, and um, it will be realized and demonstrated. You can do it, or you can wait for me to do it. But it will be realized and demonstrated because it is, in fact, the fucking truth. <laughs> okay, so you can have egg on your face, or you can do the experiment right way and demonstrate that all your talk about this stuff not being important was just you being an asshole. And the fact is, these variables are important. These variables are real. All right. It's probably enough, but I'll pause and see if there's anything else. All right. Um, I did, reading this first comment made it kind of, you know, obvious, you know, Maybe there's a better way to explain this. He seems to be using the lever as an excuse. So I'm not using it as an excuse. I'm saying this is the way to test the spring in a way. Because the simple argument is, is if the lever moves the same speed, we know what happens. 
So the only way it can't move twice as fast at twice the distance is the lever has to be moving a different amount of speed. It has to be using the momentum that doesn't go into the object. It's kind of obvious. So if I do the two experiments and I make the lever move exactly the same speed, well, we know the guaranteed outcome is I'm right. So it's the fact that the lever isn't moving the same speed is the problem. All right. So, I mean, it's, you know, I guess I could, you know, there might be a way of drawing that, but I mean, just saying it does kind of prove the point, right? We want the lever to move the same speed and putting the mass twice as far out doesn't get you the same speed. All right. You have to put it out further to slow down the lever. It's moving too fast when the five mass is only twice the distance. The lever is actually moving too fast. It needs to move slower to be the same speed it moved when the two mass was on it. All right. Uh, why do away the lever altogether and rule out the losses to the lever and the launch of the one mass and the half mass with the same spring and energy and then try the quarter mass too? Yeah, the spring launcher experiments are fine, but again, then we're back to quick releases again. All right, so the, again, the lever provides a little bit of, uh, slows things down a little because the fact is you are moving the lever you are increasing the mass, which means you can reduce the velocities. So in some respects, it helps to see the experiment. So it's something like Galileo using a ramp to be able to watch gravity. He couldn't watch gravity in real time because it's too fast, but he could watch gravity by slowing it down, by having it go down, okay, a wedge. All right, um, let's see what the replies are. So I guess I don't need to draw that, right? Same speed obviously means it has to go four times as high. It has to go twice as fast. So if the lever moves the same speed, I'm guaranteed just by the math, uh, by the physical dynamics, I'm guaranteed twice the velocity. And so what we can conclude is that when he puts the two mass at one distance, the lever doesn't move the same speed as when he puts the one mass at half the distance, I mean at twice the distance. And then what's actually happening is the lever's consuming more of the energy, which means it is going faster. And you need to slow it down by moving the mass further out. Uh, let's see, that's a very good idea, Mike. I'm sure there wouldn't be any objection. Yeah, there wouldn't be any objection for you to drop weights on top of clay. So go ahead and do that one. I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not a betting man, but I would put a tenor on there being objections, LOL. Where have I objected to you doing experiments? What I object to is you claiming proof. In, and let's understand, the Ian Gosling did that. He did the clay experiment with the wrong numbers. He did. He did a. He he made a huge, glaring kind of error, in in just measuring the distances. So he did the experiment wrong, and got his answer, and he called it a proof. Remember that? And then the very next video, when he corrected the numbers and did that correctly, and the results came out exactly my way, he made a video saying to everybody, "We got to figure out what went wrong." That's the actual history. Mike, <clears throat> why don't you take some responsibility for the actual history? Mike, <laughs> Jeez. what scum these people are. Uh, if Mr. Integrity seeks the truth as he claims, though, then there really shouldn't be any objections at all. So again, how are you going to do the experiment? The Brozosian way? I'll just use my finger? <laughs> What's exactly going to be the technique? And again, there's no, no point in continuing the argument. Um, just trying to think. Yeah, Brozo used an aluminum piece of aluminum with billiard balls. So his experiment worked because the thing he used to shoot the balls did weigh less than the billiard balls. A lot less. Significantly less. That's the problem, Ian. So this is what? 
uh, draft grifter does not think his, his, his hypothesis needs to be falsifiable. So again, none of these hypotheses are beyond testing. You're the one that says you don't have to test. Where have you tested it taking 25 times the fuel to go five times faster? Where did you test that? Where, where? Where did you pass the falsifiable test? It's a, it's a material, easy test to do. Where did your science ever do it? Where did you successfully falsify your theory, you know, prove that it's, it's, it's not destructible? Where did you do that? Where did you put it to a test, the Yankton experiment? Where did you do it? Where did you do it from space? Ever? Oh, that's right. No, never. You never even tried it. We're supposed to believe it was never even tried. <laughs> I mean, you're such hip hypocrites. It's just amazing hypocrisy. I'm saying go ahead. Do whatever experiment you can do. I'm just saying don't don't sit there and, and you know, lie to me and say you're you have this infinite integrity in the way you're doing the experiments because we've already seen how the fudges are all over the place. I mean, Brozo did the air cart experiment and the one experiment he let go of the cart and it was already moving half the velocity without anything pushing it come on I'm allowed to call bullshit all right he is above any basic scientific underpinnings so again where are your scientific underpinnings I've made five minute videos why don't you explain how denting clay with round things is good science okay but you're no you're just a useless troll you don't explain anything so why don't you challenge my argument that dropping round things into clay cannot measure absolute energy it can't possibly do it correctly. Why don't you explain how I'm wrong in that theory? Why don't you explain how I'm wrong about rolling distance and how gravity, uh, force, uh, friction caused by gravity is in fact Galilean. That is, the faster you go, the less friction there is. Why don't you show where I'm wrong? Why don't you show where you've proven me wrong? where there's a piece of evidence indicating I'm wrong. Instead, you do this, shit talking. All right, if the experiment doesn't come out his way, by definition, there's something wrong with it. Well, I'm, I'm saying by definition, this is a simple argument. You're proposing MV squared is conserved. I'm proposing, okay, that MV is. And all we're saying is, well, let's go look and see what science has done in terms of experiments to prove it. There aren't any. The simple truth is they had the de Chardelet experiment. That's it. If you ask to see the experiment where they said, yes, here, here's, here's it's showing four times the fuel to go twice as fast, there's no experiment. They'll talk about braking distance, you know, how long it takes to brake a car. And those numbers don't even come out their way. It's kind of funny. You know, they keep talking about braking distance and it's one third off. I mean, it's way below. But obviously that just has to do with friction again. So, so, um, you know, in gravity. And gravity is doing the one, three, five, seven thing. <laughs> you know, the friction's changing with the velocity. It's not proportional or linear. Uh, that's just a fact. Uh, amazing. Anyway, something wrong with it and it's your fault. He probably say something like, the lever was too brown. So this is just such a waste of time, right? There, There's real arguments being made. Obviously, until he mans up and shows the clay experiment, um, this is all, this isn't just hypocrisy, it's duplicity. It's lying scum. They have no right to say they aren't cheating or to call somebody else a cheater when clearly they're evading the experimental facts. He did the experiment. We, we can't find the experiment by some scientist. No scientist ever did it. So he did it. He got the results and he hid them. Simple fact. Okay, and draft uh, frivolous litigation. So you can make these accusations, okay? But that's all they are. All right, and so again, you'll have to explain to the judge why it's frivolous for him to understand that the law says you're not allowed to lie. Okay, you can honestly believe something but you can't lie. You can't say something if you don't have any reason to believe it. You can't say it just because you hate somebody. So you're still in trouble, shit for brain. Okay, if you're reading, I mean, judges really hate, okay, 
I'm just giving you a clue. Judges really hate people who do this, okay, who think that all the laws are frivolous, that none of the laws exist for any reason, and that we don't really need judges because every lawsuit is frivolous. They really hate that shit. Okay, you're reading this. Please go ahead. I mean, you're just not, you're not helping your own case any. Let me just put it that way. Uh, um, and somehow try to take me to court. Yeah, it's not that hard. You file a lawsuit. Okay, the problem is it's expensive. It's not hard to make the accusation. I can make the accusation you have no grounds for what you say. You have absolutely zero evidence. I know them to be falsehoods. Okay, I know there's no evidence that you can provide to support what you're saying. So, yes, you are slandering and libeling me. All right, and I'll win the case because it's an absolute fact that that's what you're doing. You're just making shit up and saying it to damage my character, to damage my reputation. That's all you're doing. You're lying. Simple. Okay. We all know the likely outcome uh, that will be the, you end up in an, another federal watch list. And again, I, I won the appeal. I won a federal appeal. I, uh, <laughs> a federal appeals court me as a pro se, you know how many pro se's who aren't prisoners win federal appeals? Probably none. <laughs> okay, there are probably about six in history. Doesn't happen very often. All right, that uh, a regular citizen gets a judge thrown off the fucking case. The appeals court told him he was full of shit. All right, and he had to recuse himself from the case because he was wrong. Simple fact. So I wasn't on a watch list for any good reason. I was on a watch list because I told the judge I have constitutional rights and you're violating them. That's what I said to the judge. <laughs> okay, so if you think that merits being on a federal watch list, then you must be some kind of fucking Nazi. Which you probably are. <laughs> you're probably a Trumper, for fuck's sake. Okay. If you're reading this, please go ahead and somehow try to take me to court. I told you, I will, as soon as it becomes practical, okay, and affordable, that's exactly what I will fucking goddamn do. Because you deserve it to be shoved in your face that you can't act like a complete fucktard, okay, without somebody somewhere saying, will you stop doing that asshole, you fucking useless weasel. If you can't make a real argument, then why don't you just shut the fuck up? The fact that Ian doesn't have the character to shut you up, to say, what the fuck are you talking about all this other crap for? Why don't you actually make a physics argument, fuckhead? All right. I don't know if there's much more. To, I mean, I, I shouldn't even... <laughs> yeah, well, let me pause and see if it's worth hitting the read more. Because maybe he just wants to add to my, my, um, the, the crimes he's committed. Oh, it was a Modi con. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. So, so again, I'm just saying, if anybody, go ahead, research it, all right? My videos are all still public on my website. The whole controversy. It was Fox News that did the story. So let's understand, you know, their perspective. Um, and, you know, the judge did, in fact, Okay, after the story, they never published a retraction. They never published another story to explain, oh, yeah, well, by the way, Judge Hiltner was sanctioned, okay, by the appeals court and told them basically, the appeals court basically said, gee, you don't even know basic law, okay, because you fucked up so fundamentally. You violated the guy's constitutional rights. That's basically what the appeals court said, okay? And the case had to be given to another judge. So I completely won the appeal, and you're saying I should be unproud that I somehow have been humiliated? No, your system has been humiliated, okay? The thing you're defending is humiliated. The watch list is humiliated because the judge was, in fact, violating my federal constitutional rights, all right, that's in fact what he was convicted of, was violating my fundamental constitutional rights. All right, and shouldn't somebody, shouldn't that person be on the watch list? Shouldn't the guy 
violating people's fundamental constitutional rights, shouldn't that judge be on the watch list? I didn't violate anybody's rights. I mean, you people are just so full of shit. God, what despicable scum shows up to to defend science? This is these are the assholes defending science. Ugh, amazing. You talk about flat earth, fanatic religious kook. I mean, that's all this fits into that category. Ugh. I mean, you would think some credible person with some kind of physics knowledge would show up and say, gee, could you guys tone down the bullshit? I mean, just a little fucking goddamn bit because you really aren't making any rational counter arguments. <laughs> you know, you pathetic losers. You are failing dismally. Oh, I mean, I'm just amazing. All right, so that's probably enough of the video. How many minutes? Oh, yes, yeah, over an hour. <laughs> it's more than enough. <sighs> Too much, no doubt. But who cares? It's all for free. <laughs>